Hello, people, and uh, welcome to 14.1, part two, which is entitled Pendulums. I decided to split them up because that way I could make each video less time, uh, but, in, but talk, talk about them in sufficient detail. Uh, so pendulums, you probably all have experience with pendulums, and pendulums are lumped into periodic motion because pendulums repeat themselves. Anytime something repeats itself, we call that periodic motion. There's a period, there's a, a certain amount of time that it cycles. A, a pendulum cycles, a spring bobbing cycles, a wave waving cycles. Um, so we're going to talk about pendulums. And I've got just a couple things about pendulums. Like thing number one, the, a pendulum, when it swings, the only thing it depends on is the length. A heavier mass on the bottom will do nothing to make it swing any faster. Longer will swing fat, slower, shorter will swing faster, but the length does everything. The other thing, the only other way you can make a pendulum swing faster or slower, aside from altering the length, is to put it under an amount of, a different amount of gravity. And you'll see this equation right here, period equals 2 pi over the square root of L divided by G. L stands for length, G is gravity, T is period. And just think about that. I mean, think about if I was in zero gravity. I take a pendulum, I pull it back, I let it go. There's no gravity pulling it down, so it's going to stay there. So its period is infinity. There is none. Gravity is zero. So you can divide by zero. One divided by zero, as this gets closer and closer, is, is becomes infinity. Or the contra converse of that is if whether there's a lot of gravity, some place where there's an enormous amount of gravity, you let go of that pendulum, and it's going to rock it back and forth. So I've got a couple of, of fun little videos to show you to start us off and deal with pendulums. Uh, the first one, this is the inspiration for the pendulum that I have in my back. I, I literally patterned it exactly off of this. I had a study hall. We, each person took a different ball on this pendulum, and they counted how many times it swung back and forth when it did its job. And I reverse engineered this. I applied this equation. I counted how many times, figured out its period, and then and then figured out its length from this equation. Oh, how long does these do these need to be in order to give me a period of this? And it's it's really neat how the math works. But I'll just show it to you right now. This is at Arizona State in their um, in their science and engineering portion of their building. It's a lot more refined than mine, too, because it has these little magnetic dampeners. That's what these like little spots are. They're magnets that come up to stop it from swinging. And it's got these little lever arms that lift it up. But it's really fascinating and mesmerizing to watch. I mean, like, how does it do that? And if you look, the ball on the far right is swinging at a lot higher frequency than the ball on the far left. It's just a, a function of its length. They, they just alter the lengths of these to do something very interesting. So here we're 30 seconds in right now. back to normal. Pretty amazing. I've got kind of a, let's see, just an emulator for pendulums here that just shows, here's a, here's a simple pendulum. I'll give it lots of friction. It's on planet Earth. The mass is one kilogram. The length of it's really long, 2.5 meters. I pull the thing back to, maybe I'll pull it back to 45 degrees. Let her swing. And you'll note, because I've got, there's lots of friction, this thing will end up dying pretty quickly. There's friction up here in this axis of rotation. If I took this friction completely away, the exact opposite would happen. Take her back up to 45 degrees. 
let it swing, and it's never going to deviate. It's always going to come back to 45 degrees. Now, in real life, we can never get fr pulleys that frictionless. We strive for it. It's really cool. Um, I've got some really neat videos of what are called chaos pendulums that I've, I've tried to build. I'll, I'll show you those after this. But what happens, like, let's say I make my, let, let's figure out how much time this takes. So I can photogate timer. It'll start the timer. How long does it take to repeat itself? 3.3 seconds. I make this thing a lot shorter. Let's time it. 1.6 seconds. So I make it really short, I make it really long, I make it someplace in between. But the fact is, when I change the weight, look at that, 2.59 seconds. If I make this heavier, I'll double the weight on there. 2.59 seconds. I can take it almost down to nearly nothing. 2.59 seconds. The amount of mass that's on there means nothing. And again, I can put this on the moon. And you'll see that it's going to go a lot slower because gravity isn't as strong on the moon. I could put it on Jupiter. And it's going to swing a lot quicker. Just to kind of show you, you can time it. 1.55 seconds. I can even go zero gravity. If I'm at zero gravity, pull this thing up, let it go, nothing happens. Now, and along with this, swinging it on Earth, I can show you the energies, what's going on here. So here's, this shows the energies. Let's, uh, let's pull this back here. Give it a certain amount of energy, and you'll see that the, the higher I raise this, the more potential energy I'm giving it, and that's the total energy. So I let this thing swing, and the energy just oscillates before, between kinetic and potential. I'll slow it down a little bit. When I'm at the very bottom, you'll notice it's all kinetic energy. I'm going as fast as possible at the very bottom, and I have no potential because I'm already at the very bottom. On the opposite, I go to the very top of my swing, stop it there. Now I have all potential energy, no kinetic. So you'll see this oscillating between potential, kinetic, potential, kinetic. And when I'm exactly in the middle, I went a little bit too far. But my potential and kinetic would be the same. Now if I add friction into this, now I start losing energy to heat. So you'll see the thermal energy start to climb. Friction, friction, fr lots of friction. Here I'm losing energy to heat until all the energy I put in leaves it as heat. I continue to lose that energy, and this, this thermal energy is going to climb, 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 climb until it's all gone as heat. So all the energy I put in, it exited as air resistance, as stretching of the line, uh, friction in the, the swivel up at the top. But that's it. That's, that's kind of like a, a crash course in um, pendulums. I guess the only other thing I could really want to maybe show you is acceleration and velocity so I, I can click on velocity and you can see here that when I pull it up here velocity is the biggest at the bottom and I have zero velocity at the very top so zero velocity tons of velocity and acceleration it's fun to watch that one look at that when it's at the bottom it's accelerating up because things are always accelerating towards the center of the circle Show them both. Whoa. The acceleration is in the direction of the net force. So when I'm here, I've got gravity pulling this thing down. I've got a string pulling it this way. If I were to take this vector, put it on the bottom there, Here's my resultant. And that's the direction of the acceleration. 
you'll always have acceleration in the direction of the net force. One more video of a pendulum before we do the one problem that we have as an example. And you can see this guy's inputting energy at a certain time and he builds amplitude. This is called resonance. Things resonate when if you put energy into it at a certain time, every time you can build amplitude. And that's what he's doing here. He's building amplitude until you, you guess what's going to happen. Building amplitude. <laughs> I would assume his feet are strapped into this thing because there's no way. He's got to get up there soon. <laughs> if he doesn't go over this time, I don't know. There. Nicely done. And here's one more um, pendulum I wanted to show you. It, this is a, a high-performance double pendulum. And this is created, they call it, they call them chaos pendulums. And you'll see why, because there's really no way to predict what this is going to do. Because this is, these are two linked pendulums, and no joke, this thing is such a good pendulum. It's going to last for 22 minutes, just doing random things. It loses very little of its energy to friction. I had some kids try to build this, and we actually sent an email to the guy that built this, and they, they tried their best, but I think they didn't do a really good job. I'd love to have something like this sitting in my classroom for people to just fling like that. I think it's all about the bearings. It continues to do. I'll leave a link to this if you want to watch any more of it. But let's do, let's do the problem that we've got here. Problem says, you've got a pendulum of length this, and it's got a period of that. What's gravity at this location? So we're going to use this equation. This period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. We know the period is 1.22 seconds, 2 pi. And we know the length is 0 0.369 meters, and we're trying to find gravity. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2 pi. So I'm going to take out my calculator, come over here. There we go. I'm going to take 1.22 divided by, make sure I put parentheses around my 2 pi, 0.194. So I get 0 0.194 equals the square root of 0.369 over g. I'm going to square both sides now to get rid of that radical. So I'll square it, and I get 0.0377. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the g over, and then I'm going to replace it with that. So then I get 0.369 divided by point my answer. I'm just going to divide it by second function answer, and I get 9.79. And that's about what we should expect. Because we know gravity is 9.80, so we're thinking, yeah, that, that seems about right. So it's just a little bit less, so maybe they're up in the air a little bit. Maybe they're down on the ground a little bit. That's an interesting discussion all on its own. Where do you get, how do you get acceleration of gravity less than this? It's a fun question, and, and not as easy as you might think. You're like, oh, just go high up in the mountain. There's other places you can go, too, to get um, gravity less than that. So pendulums, they're kind of good fun. You see them in grandfather clocks. The only thing that dictates how fast they swing is their length.
and gravity, but typically we're only on Earth.